podcast about all things motorsport it's just me today alex your presenter um daniel is working and ivan is on his way at the moment to one raceway near canberra for the high-tech oil super series uh this weekend in the formula rxa car so it's just me and we're going to be discussing all things um about supercars this weekend as they travel up to the gold coast for the gold coast 500 uh, Bryce has already asked, have you seen all the T8 news? Yes, we will be getting into that in a second. Um, let's really, really, really quickly start off by saying that it's potentially, potential, that uh, Will Brown could actually clinch the title this weekend. Uh, he has a 204-point lead over uh, Brock Feeney, his teammate, and a 225-point lead to Chaz Mostert. Um, he needs a 300-point gap by the end of the weekend. And he clinches the title for the Adelaide race as the maximum points for Adelaide is 300. Got a few gifts in here, by the way, from TikTok viewers. We've got six at the moment. Thank you all for the gifts. We really appreciate that. And, um, yeah, back to the points title. I I actually think he can do it, honestly, uh, Will Brown. So um, if that answers your question a little bit there uh, in our own videos posted, that one there. I think Will Brown can do it. Um, he has just, hasn't really been all that successful at the Gold Coast, but what he needs to do is kind of just be there or be thereabouts. I don't think he'll actually get the 300 points fully, but I think he'll be leading by at least 220, maybe. Um, Brock Feeney also hasn't had the best of runs at the Gold Coast 500. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a tough track for him. I think the the biggest threat to winning is Cam Waters, Matt Payne. Uh, I'd say Brody Kostecki again, now that he's won a race at Erebus this year. Um, Obviously coming off the Bathurst 1000 victory. Uh, We've got some news about him too, so stick around for that as well. It might be related to my hat. It might not be. Then also Chad Mostert is also always a weapon around the streets of Surface Paradise. And uh, there's actually, a, I don't, didn't even realize this, but Jim's, yeah, James Golding, Jimmy Golding, is actually fifth in the championship. He's obviously mathematically nowhere near, but fifth for the new long racing driver. And let's get into some news straight away. He has a new teammate next year, uh, does James Golding, in um, Richie Stunaway. Um, people are a bit uh, iffy, let's call it, on this decision. Myself included. I really thought Todd Hazelwood was going to get that seat, to be brutally honest, uh, especially after his performance at Bathurst. Um, Richie also did amazing. He actually qualified fourth, I believe it was. But as Bryce has written here, a lot of people are saying, how many chances does Richie Stanaway get? And he's been giving another lifeline in the supercars world. Obviously made his return to the supercars paddock with uh, Penrite Racing this year. And let's be honest, it hasn't really gone too well. Um, I honestly think this weekend was his best weekend, uh, qualifying fourth at Bathurst. He had a pretty okay event in Torpor as well, but hasn't really done the things everything everyone expected to. Obviously, coming off the Bathurst 1000 victory last year with SVG. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really agree with this, with this, with the decision. Um, I do feel like there could have been better contenders. Um, even someone, maybe even Super Two, like a Zach Bates or something, um, has shown enormous potential um, in 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 the seat. But I, I think it, Todd Hazelwood was the front runner to get it, and unless something changes at BJR or even BRT again, which there's news about that too. Um, then he's going to just be a co-driver again. And speaking of that, it has been leaked, or not leaked, but linked, that um, Todd Hazelwood could partner up once again with Brody Kostecki, but this time at Dick Johnson Racing. And 
I think that's really cool. I really do think that's pretty cool that kind of like how Scott McLaughlin did with Alex Prema. He just brought his co-driver from Gary Rogers Motorsport to DJR, which would, this would be the exact same thing. Um, and, you know, why not go again? They, they've won it. They were the fastest car most of the weekend. Um, they didn't really show up until uh, qualifying. And, um, well, top 10 shootout. And, look, they had the best car over the weekend. They know how to win the race, which I think is the best part. But, obviously, being going from a Camaro to a Mustang, they can't really replicate everything. There'd be completely different setup changes um, to, to go along with the difference in car model. But I guess the best part about it is the re- the relationship, the connection that two boys have. And obviously, they were both kind of... Uh, how can we describe this? They didn't have the best of 2025s, just being the fact that Brody had the controversial start to the season. Todd got pretty much kicked out for Aaron Love, who isn't performing. So it's a bit of a sell-off to I should still be in the paddock kind of deal, um, if that made any sense at all. But you get what I mean. He was wrongly exited out of supercars, I feel. And has come back and won the Bathurst 1000, like the biggest, you know, go F yourself, basically, without saying the word. But, um, look, obviously he deserves everything after the Bathurst 1000 victory. So I hope he does go to DJR next year with Brody at the very minimum. But who knows, maybe he'll have a full-time role again somewhere. I really don't know where. It's literally, I think, just BJR or nothing. But Or he won't go back to BRT either. So maybe it's just DJR. That's all he's got left. Anyway, more news on the weekend. Uh, one that I'm quite fond of, actually, which is the no more minimum fuel stops. Basically, what that means is there's no minimum amount of fuel you have to put into the car to get to the end or like you know to be classified at the end i'm hang on real quick bryce is interrupted and says say i am wrong but todd and richie are in the same boat they get too many chances yeah i agree i do agree and it's unfortunate now because the way it looks like we're going back to the todd hazel thing but it's kind of unfortunate the fact that they're doing the exact same thing you know, Richie gets kicked out of supercars, comes back, wins Bathurst 1000 as a co-driver. Todd gets kicked out of supercars, wins Bathurst 1000 as a co-driver. <laughs> it's the exact same story, except that Todd only was out of the season, has only been out of supercars for one season. I think Richie was about four or three or four. So, yeah, a little bit different there. But in terms of the way they've performed at uh, the Enduros as being the freshest, probably, co-driver alongside Scott Pye, um, then, yeah, you can say that it's pretty much the same story. So, Bryce, I don't think you're necessarily wrong. Um, you, you're actually pretty much right. They do get a lot of chances. But I think Todd's a bit more deserved of those than Richie is. Anyway, um Back to the fuel stops situation, I really think... So the whole point of it is to allow more strategy in the racing. Um, To me, it kind of... I don't know if it's going to make a difference on how many pit stops um, teams will do, but it does definitely impact the amount of time they spend in their lane. Um, Obviously, I'm not a strategist, so I don't know how this could really affect them going forward for the, for the round. Um. Other news is there's yeah, there's not really official news, but BRT, Blanchard Racing, they're going to make some changes. That's all they've said publicly. Whether or not that means changes to some staff behind the scenes, not really sure. Or it could be as big as getting rid of Aaron Love, who... I was skeptical about him coming into this season, and I think I've been point proven. He hasn't done much. Um, and, yeah, I think, obviously, Todd Hazel was in that seat before and is better than Aaron Love. I don't know if it was a money thing or just, you know, potential thing, but 
is what it is, I guess. Um, who knows what BRT have planned for this change, but I guess we'll see after the weekend, most likely. Um, a bit of news, uh, Bryce mentioned it before in the comments of our um, of our pod here, is that um, Triple Eight have done um, yeah. Basically, what's kind of happened is um, Triple Eight have gone out and made some investments. One of which is I didn't see that coming at all, and the other one I kind of did. Um, Caleb Stanaway, welcome. Uh, we're just talking about your brother and his new contract at Newlon. Congrats to him. Um, but the thing that Triple A have done is that they have invested in a Super 2 entry. Again, actually two of them. And I'll just find their drivers real quick because I forgot to write it down. Um, their drivers are... Why didn't I write this down? Hang on. Their rookies are Jackson Walls and Ben Gomesol. Um, I don't know too much about them. All I know is that they're in Super 2 now, or 3, either one. And um, obviously they haven't been in Super 2 since the rise of Brock Feeney, I believe. And yeah, obviously they did very good things there. It'd be interesting to know how well they do with these... Um, to, yeah, Jackson was from, from Portugal. Thank you for reminding me there, Bryce. I knew the name was familiar, just forgot where. Um, yeah, look, a very interesting lineup there. Obviously, probably not the same level as a Brock Feeney was. Um, however, who knows? And obviously, it's going to be very difficult for them boys to work their way up into supercars with the current driver lineup that um, Red Bull have. But it's cool that Super 2 has a new entry in Triple Eight. And I also want to bring up the point of, I'm kind of hoping with such a big team joining the Super 2 category that it will show initiative for their racing to be improved. However, I must say, and I'm sure if the boys were here backing me up, Daniel and Ivan, that the the racing at Bathurst was quite impressive. Um, yeah, unbelievable that... Um, <laughs> there was not one safety car in, I believe, the second race. Or, oh, no, sorry, the first one. Can't really remember. But the racing was so much better than it has been all year. And I don't know if the boys got a, a, a pep talk of some sort or got told to keep it clean. But, obviously, we know what happened at the Bathurst 500 at the start of the year where they didn't even count the first race because the safety car led the most laps. Um, and it was good to see that they had improved upon that. Sorry, I've just got a lot of comments come in on TikTok right now as I'm recording this. Uh, Daniel has written, I don't know if that's our Daniel or not. Uh, Daniel has written, Triple Eight bought two Gomasol Motorsport Zebby Commodores with Jason running for Triple Eight. Or Jason's son racing for Triple Eight. Sure. And, yeah, also, um, Bryce has mentioned the thing I was about to talk about next, which is really random, I feel. But Triple Eight uh, are also investing in Aussie, supercar uh, Aussie racing cars, sorry, the little one-seater, awesome little things that I actually love watching, probably more than any other support category, um, in providing a chassis adventure for the category, I don't really know too much about this, apart from the fact that they're going to take delivery of a whole bunch of Triple Eight made chassis. Maybe this is for a safety reason. Um, I'm kind of just reading this as I go. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, no, hang on. No, they're still going to be running the same kind of cars, just new just new chassis. I think it's just to assist the cat. Yeah, it's literally just to assist the category, and make sure I guess they're a bit more safer. Um, I don't think this is all starting next year though. So yeah, not much is changing now, just in the future. So I guess that's cool. Um, yeah, but they're gonna have enough, like an, an actual team for Aussies, Aussie racing cars. But yeah. Basically, Bryce has just written, it's just a deal with Aussie, Aussie, oh my god, I keep saying supercars, 
Aussie racing cars to create chassis on demand, really, because Triple Eight have the, you know, the resources to do so. And I guess they are a lot easier than making a V8 supercar. Uh, Xavier has come in and immediately asked a very good question, which I personally haven't talked about on LTM because I've been away a little bit. Um, actually, I'm very glad you asked this question. Uh, what's your opinion on the Supras coming into V8 supercars? And like I said, I haven't actually mentioned anything myself. I'm sure the boys have in past episodes. We got another gift from someone else. Thank you so much. Um, I really like the Supras. I'm very much looking forward to the Supras as we've just been sent 43 flaming hearts. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, the Supras look wild. The only concern I have with them is I feel like just as the Camaro was, it looks like getting in and out of the car is going to be very difficult. Um, so maybe safety is a bit of a concern on that end, but I'm sure they've done their work and research on how to deal with it. Um, have I seen the engine? Yeah, I don't, I don't know too much about the engines off by heart, but I did see that they have worked a lot on the engines that they're going to be using. Um, are they actually V8s or not? I'm not really sure. They, I'm assuming they would be. <laughs> R35 would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, they are V8, it's cool. Um, oh, yeah, right, it's the, yeah, the Lexus engine. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, well, I guess they do own Lexus, so why not use it? Um, I think it's a pretty copycat of the GT3, yeah, the GT3 car that they've used. I also think it's kind of a copycat of the GT4 Supra that is also used, because um, GT4 and GT3 have pretty similar engines. It's just aero that makes a difference. So I feel like this car is going to be very similar to the GT4 car they're already using in America. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, Toyota coming into as just a brand, I think it's really, really cool. Obviously, Toyota is one of the most popular cars, like as a brand in Australia, with their legendary reliability and whatnot. So I think... It'll bring a lot more fans in, especially because I feel like, and tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I feel like these days, Toyota is more Australian than Chevy and Ford, just based on the fact that um, there's a lot more of them. I think Ford is probably the probably the closest one, obviously, having the Ranger and all that stuff is they're everywhere on the road now. So I'm really, really thinking that Lexus, ah, sorry, Lexus, Toyota as a brand has done a really, really good thing in joining the category because the brand, even without any motorsport in supercars, is also really, really promoting, pr pr promoting a really good thing. However, Bryce just wrote, what are Toyota really promoting? Camrys and Hiluxes. I think it's more the GR side of things. Um, obviously, I don't want more Camrys in the road. There's already enough. And <laughs> I think... Um, the GR spec cars is what they're really promoting well. I don't think the Yaris did as good as they thought. Also, Toyota, if you're going to put Yaris's on the road, don't make them $70,000. That's just ridiculous. And the screen in the middle is like this big. No. And I think the Ca the Corolla, the GR Corolla is like almost $90,000. Just no. no. That's why there's like two of them on the road, all right? Anyway, going off topic. But I think they're trying to promote the GR series. And they've done a really, really, really good job with the GR86. My neighbor's got one, loves it. Um, I had the old spec 86, and I really loved that, and and I probably would have, I probably would buy another one, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I think the GR brand is what Toyota needs to promote more, and I think they're really going hard at the GR thing. I think almost, I'm pretty sure they're not even calling it Toyota Super, they're just calling it GR Super, so I don't know. But, yeah, as long as they stop promoting cameras on the road, I'm fine with that because there's already too many of them. Um, let's go through the comments here real quick as I've been bombarded, which is good. Keep them coming in. I love the comments. Makes this way more fun and interesting. Uh, Poz has written, I like Toyota coming in, need something more relevant in the sense that they'll sell more Toyotas in Australia. Yeah, same point I was trying to make it before. Uh, Min1388 has written, possibly of Will Brown, Will Brown wrapping up the championship this weekend. I did say before that I think he has the potential to do it, but I think there are better drivers at the Gold Coast 500 than himself. 
such as Cam Waters, Mostert, and Kostecki. I think he can still um, open the gap up to Brock Feeney a little bit more because Brock struggles around Gold Coast in terms of his last results. So I don't know if he can wrap it up because he needs 196 points. Sorry, 106 points to do so. No, that's not right. What am I talking about? 96. 96 points to do so. Um, and I don't know if he can have that much of a gap to Brock, but we'll, we'll see. Um and I don't really think there's going to be a four-way fight into Adelaide. But next year there will be, when the finals are in uh, in the full swing. Uh, more comments coming here. Uh, da, 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 da. Toyota are partnering with the Haas in F1 too, as Kayla's written. Yes, yes, that's true. But like I said, it's more the GR side of things than Toyota. Uh, Paul Anderson will... Uh, Paul Henderson wrote, Will Brown will never, will never what? And Bryce is like, why not race the Camry? Because we don't need hybrids in supercars, Bryce. That's my opinion. Whereas the Supra is not a hybrid. It's actually technically a BMW. Anyway, um, <laughs> Caleb's written, I want Chaz to win the championship. So do I. So do I. I don't want a Red Bull to win again. But at least it's not... Um, At least it's not like... <laughs> and I've got a very interesting comment here. At least it's not Shane Van Gisbergen winning it again. Um, Paul Anderson has written, Will Brown is like the Port Adelaide of racing. Um, I'm a Port fan. And I know that... Well, Will Brown's about to win the championship, most likely. So unless they choke it, then they're not the Port Adelaide of racing. They're probably He's probably the... Uh, this year is probably, I would say Sydney, but they got smashed in the final. I can't think. I don't know. But I don't think they're Port Adelaide. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, Bryce has written, it's just, it doesn't make sense for, because no GR car has a V8 in it. Yeah, agreed. That's true. But like, Kia wanted to join as well, and I don't think many manufacturers even make a V8 anymore. Besides the Mustang and the Camaro. So I think whoever joins... Or even Volvo, they didn't have a V8. Um, so whoever joins is going to have a different spec engine. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. Um, Paul's written, yeah, he's, he's, he's corrected himself. Port choked big, big time. Yeah, they choked the last five years. You don't need to remind me. I've got a whole cupboard full of Port Adelaide stuff, which is... A waste of money. Anyway, um, let's get back to the more comments. Caleb's written here. Yeah, the Supra is so silly how it doesn't even have Toyota parts. No, it literally says BMW in the engine bay. So take of that what you will. Um, anyway, let's get back to some other news. Um, there's only one bit left before we keep talking about the actual event of the weekend, which is Greg Murphy has become the Adelaide 500 fan ambassador. Not ambassador, fan ambassador. They've just completely made up that word. But um, I think they've done this because it is the I think, 25th anniversary of um, the LA 500. And was it 25 years that he won? I can't remember what the actual reason of it is, but he won 25 years ago. I think that's what it was. Because Craig, Craig Lowndes won the first one, I think. Um, so I think he won 25 years ago. Um, and he's the fan ambassador for the weekend, which will be cool as I just take a quick drink. Um, keep the comments coming in. Um, any questions you'd like on this year's championship, Supra, uh, Gold Coast, Adelaide, whatever you'd like. Heck, we can even ask questions about um, next year's championship because... I'm really looking forward to next year's championship. Anyway, uh, let's continue on, and we'll uh, go through the schedule for the weekend. Now, um, I've written it in Queensland time. Obviously, now with Dallas Savings, it's literally screwed everything. Um, but practice one for VS Supercars. Oh, sorry, I'll go, hang on, real quick. I'll go through the support categories. Um, so, obviously, you had Supercars, Super Utes, uh, Aussie Racing Cars, GR Cup, the Toyotas, that's going to be wild to have, like, I think they, they almost have 40-odd cars, like 35 or something. 
that's going to be really cool. And then Porsche Carrera Cup as well. Um, in terms of supercar uh, track schedule, there's only two practice sessions, which is great, all on the Friday at 12.30 local time and 3.35 local time. On the Saturday, qualifying is at 11 a.m. local time. Top 10 shootout is at 12.35. And the race on Saturday, which is race 21 of the year, is at 3.15. Sunday is qualifying at 10.10 a.m. Top 10 shootout is 11.35 a.m. And the race starts at 2.15 p.m. So, yeah, different days. Obviously, if you go on the Saturday... You get a more of a more of a long day, and the Sunday you get a bit more compact schedule. Um, Bryce written we need the GTs back at the Gold Coast. Now we need IndyCar back at the Gold Coast. Scott McLaughlin, make it happen. We need it back. Oh my God, I would instantly fly to Queensland to watch that. No questions asked. Um, what else can we talk about with the weekend? Obviously, it's a really important. Weekend championship wise, as I said before, Brown holds a 204 point lead. I don't think he's going to win the championship this weekend, but he'll get really close, I feel. In terms of who I think is going to win, uh, let's get into some predictions. Sure, why not? I I really struggle to go past Cam Waters this weekend because uh, he dominated last year in terms of qualifying. It was the fastest car by a mile. Who actually won last year? I don't remember who won last year. Let me quickly find it as I talk on about um, support categories. Uh, ah, okay. Scott has written here. Um, what about support categories? Which one would you like to know? The schedule. I have it up. So feel free to ask which one you would like to know about. I only write down the supercar schedule. Um, where am I here? Yeah, who won last year? Yeah, Reynolds. Yes, Reynolds won. That was a really good race, actually. Like I said, I was there on the Sunday, and I didn't watch the Saturday because I was in Queensland flying on a plane. Um, Aussie cars. Yeah, cool. Scott's asked about the Aussie car schedule. Let's bring that up. Uh, they have a 9.50 practice on, on Friday as well as a qualifying session, 11.55 a.m. And they actually have a race on Friday, too. At 3.30 p.m., uh, Aussie Racing Cars on Saturday. Race 2 is at 9.05. Race 3 is at 12 p.m. And that's it for Saturday. And Sunday, they have a race in the morning at 10.05 a.m., all local time. And then they're done. Um, Nash Morris is in here. Welcome, Nash. Appreciate you joining our um, our pod. Welcome to OTM. Good luck this weekend in the uh, in the Porsches. So yeah, <laughs> um, all right. Well, that took me by surprise. Let's <laughs> have a. Have Nash Morrison here. Always welcome. Um, where am I up to? I've completely lost track of uh, my thoughts. In terms of predictions, yeah. I um, really find it hard to go past uh, Cam Waters um, for the weekend. Also, Most, it's also strong. But yeah, maybe maybe Reynolds can pull out another one out of the bag. He had a really tough race. Uh, sorry, a tough weekend last week at Bathurst. So hopefully he can claw his way back up the front. Obviously, had the huge crash in qualifying. And then that just kind of set them back the whole weekend. Uh, Bryce has written here that KO doesn't start on Friday until 1pm, which is stupid. <laughs> yeah, that is a bit stupid. Um, but I guess not many people would really follow into all the practice sessions for um, the support categories as much as supercars. I guess it actually starts at 1pm because supercars, local time is at 1pm which for the East Coast is 1.30, so I guess you have a half an hour preview. Um, <laughs> I know, I just said not many people, but I know you do, Bryce. Yes, that's a very good point. So, um, yeah, 100%, that's uh, really, really cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much 
all I've really got for the weekend. Um, obviously, top 10 shootouts are going to be amazing. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing those. I was, I was re-watching Cam Waters' lap from last year, and it's just off the scale. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I think that's pretty much going to end the episode, unless you guys want to keep sending me messages. Um, feel free to do so. I'm always keen to talk all things motorsport. Um, bu- bu- bu. Got a message here about uh, something else, but um, I'll end the pod there, um, and then I'll do a Q and A. You guys can keep messaging me on TikTok. So if you want to get involved in more of our stuff online, obviously TikTok's the way what the way to go. We have all these um, podcasts mainly recorded on TikTok, so you guys can uh, message me as we're going. Um, the next video will be probably just the next um, Gold Coast event video, which will be the review of the weekend. So hopefully um, everyone here can stay tuned for that. That'll come out probably sometime next week on like the Tuesday maybe. And obviously we still have a radio show for the wrap for the whole weekend. We've got a big weekend this weekend. MotoGP, F1, Gold Coast, and obviously Ivan's racing in Formula RX8. So he'll be keen to talk about that. Um, so yeah, um, thanks everyone for watching. I'll stick around and um, yeah, appreciate the love and support. So thank you guys for watching. Bye.